Uh, do we have any questions or yes, please? No, first, yeah. And please say your names. Uh, my name is Naji Akkök, and I am a Norwegian Turk or Turkish Norwegian. And Naji, on. before you start talking, I would say that uh, everybody, so I don't only say to the others, but please keep it short. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am an engineer and a politician, a Norwegian politician, and um, my primary headache, this, this uh, we've, we've uh, called the theme here, um, uh, where's Turkey going? I think we more or less understand now where Turkey is going. That is not the question I am trying to get an answer to these days. But what can be done, at least from my point, my, my headache is Europe. My headache is the uh, legitimation of this mess in Turkey, basically. Um, I call it the policy of Europe. Nils, uh, in a sense, uh, mentioned in the end um, that Erdogan has these geopolitical cards in his hand, the Trump cards. I'd like to question, this is for all of you, how valid are those? Are they just perceptive cards? That is what I really believe. I believe that Europe can do much better, basically. And the question is not only what you think about what I've just said, but how do we wake Europe up? That is my question. That's a very clear question. I was thinking about taking one more question and then give you the possibility to answer. Please, here. Yeah, okay, let's, let's start out. Uh, Siri, first. It's a First of all, still on. Um, okay, thank you for your question, and I think it's a valid one and, and uh, a very good one. Uh, I think that he has the cards on his hands. Uh, I think that he uh, w uh, can. Um Siri, can you please speak up? I, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's very close to. Your, yeah, is it line. possible so to turn it? Okay, is this bad? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you hear what I said in the no, beginning? No. Okay. Um, I think that Erdogan has the power uh, over Europe um, with the refugee uh, deal. Uh, because Europe doesn't want to take responsibilities for the refugees, that's why. So he can say that, okay, if you don't give me the visa, then I will just open the gates to Europe and you will have your problem. Uh, and, and this the European leaders know, and not least, the right-wing opposition parties in Europe also knows this, and they are playing into it. And there is where his power lays. That's my opinion. Ashen, would you like to co continue? Well, yeah, I agree completely what you said. Um, you see, I think the problem is in, in Turkey, you get the impression that the Turks and the Kurds and people down there, they think that Europe uh, or EU is some something similar to United, uh, United States. And this is, of course, totally, we all know this is totally wrong. That is the weakness of EU, that the EU actually does, don't exist for, to a certain extent. I mean, you have a lot of different countries with different interests, and they're playing their own game. So that is, that's why it's impossible to, to talk with one voice. Uh, Merkel, Angela Merkel tried, but you see what happened with Eastern Europe, what they did, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, England left, left EU and so forth. I mean, it does not exist, uh, a, a, a unite, united uh, EU today. So Erdogan has a free, a free, um, free to, 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 to play his game, and it's, he has no strong opponent at all. That is the problem, as I see it. Uh, I've heard from uh, Kurdish people that they say that if um, they give 
visa freedom to, to Turkey, then we will have 500,000 Kurdish people here instead. So this is a, quite a different, uh, difficult dilemma, I would say. Nerina, please <laughs> comment. Not least that as Erdogan has um, discussed the idea that all the Syrian refugees in Turkey should get citizenship. And of course, that, by that deal, all the two or three million, how many Syrian refugees Turkey now hosts, will have a free route, a much safer route to re Europe by airplane, which is good for them, but which actually just increases the problem of Europe. Um, one thing is the refugee crisis, the other thing is the war in Syria. The Turkey has the air bases that the US and the NATO need to fight against IS. And this, of course, is, has been very central as well. And as Turkey now is the, has the largest military after the US, their involvement in the war in Syria is, of course, quite wanted by the allies. So, again, as long as the Kurds played a role on the ground, the Kurds were support supported, but now as they threaten or are perceived as a threat to Turkey, as they actually are on their way to close the whole corridor on the Syrian-Turkish border, and Turkey has no access, will then have no access to the rest of Syria, <coughs> then Erdogan plays the game, well, we consider them terrorists. Are you collaborating with terrorists or are you collaborating with your NATO ally? And well, the, the last invasion in Syria, of course, showed that, again, some percentage of the forces went against IS, the rest went against the Kurdish forces, trying to push them back east of the Euphrates so that the corridor that Turkey wants to have to the rest of, of, of Syria should be free. He played his cards well. Thank you. And then here, please. Well, my question was about the one that Ms. Bertrand raised at the end. Uh, Your name first? Anton Frederik Andresen. Uh, I wondered about uh, the situation before 2012 uh, and what it could tell us about what kind of society were they contemplating, both Erdogan and Gülen, uh, when they were sort of establishing uh, their people all around in the Turkish society. Uh, in Europe, Western Europe, we had the impression that both of them were actually sort of the moderate uh, Islam and we would now have this kind of a partner who were Muslim, but with uh, <coughs> compromises and modesty all over the line. Was that all a sham, or were they, have they been changed by the development, or <coughs> what was happening, and what can one hope for? Sanar, would you like to try to give a sh short answer to that? Okay. Erdos. Uh, Erdogan and his party in Gül's party is a follower of the former Islamic politic parties in Turkey. It started with Necmettin Erbakan and his parties. And just as pro-Kurdish parties, uh, they were closed by the uh, constitutional court many times and immediately a new, the same party went on with the new names. But on the 28th February process, we call it, when the government uh, of um, Necmettin Erbakan was collapsed by the military with a, a postmodern uh, coup, they called it themselves, uh, then they saw that it is not so possible to continue this way. And they, uh, Erdogan and his friends, modernized uh, their ideas and feelings more. They, uh, Erdogan was attacking all uh, Europe and others, or Christians, etc. But now they said, Turkey's place is in EU. And they give, uh, gave a feeling uh, that they're much modern, they're not uh, keep on using the old uh, uh, methods and slogans. So it was something new. And most of the people who voted for 
those parties before and their parties were closed were naturally angry and that polarization feeling came whatever we do uh, they close our parties and they came closer to each other and some other groups who were against the militaries also were fighting against them so after uh, in a moderate uh, to, uh, atmosphere in Turkey, and after Erdogan came out of the prison, and they worked so hard, and they kept the old carers together, and also gained many conservative votes uh, with them. So they were able to uh, give a new, um, what do you say, form a new face to that political uh, um, Islamic political uh, uh, scenery. And at the beginning in 2002, when they elected and they won in the elections, then it was a great shock. So the old state in which military was standing at the middle have tried to uh, find new ways to eliminate them once again. And a case was opened that this uh, constitutional court to close them. But with a very little majority, it was not. It, so step by step, it went on. But that feeling still still goes on. Erdogan used it very well. He's always a victim. And not only him, but all these groups who loved that new party and that feeling, they also had the same feeling. They're trying to abolish our party and uh, again turning back to old days. And still he is using that, even after his great collapse on the uh, June 7 elections, starting the war again using with the security feeling of the most of the people, he was again able to convince uh, the old votes that he lost back, bring them back with uh, that feeling. But it is all uh, around the world the same thing. When masses of people have the fear of security, then usually they always want to hide behind the uh, strong. So it was the same in the United States, you know, what happened after 7-11. So, this is, uh, I don't know if this is, has been an answer to your question, but this was the how uh, that political Islamic party went down and grew up. One word is very important for Erdogan in many of his speeches, he using the word purity. So he want a nation that is pure. And he can use that in all different senses, you know, to throw out all the alcoholics, the looters, all the, you know, all the critics and everybody. Uh, but it's an interesting question to, to, to go further into. Yes, please. Shall we take, I'll take two uh, questions now after each other and then you can answer. Yes, please. My name is Masoud Akko. I am a Syrian Kurdish journalist. Uh, thank you of, uh, to Mr. Samara and the gentlemen and ladies. Uh, a subject like Turkey, we have a lot of uh, questions about, but I would ask you, Mr. Sanar, about the, the deep state in Turkey, Fatihullah Gulen. Is it uh, Erdogan, uh, is it true that he has a big role in, inside Turkey, or uh, just lying? Uh, uh, I mean about Fatihullah Gulen. Yes, let me uh, take... Yeah, and the second question, do you think that Turkish will continue uh, involving inside Syria? I mean, uh, do you think uh, it will attack Kurdish states like Hamishlo, Afrin, Kobani? Uh, of maybe it will stop in Jarablus, uh, not, quit, not uh, continue inside more, uh, according to the Adana agreement. Thank you. Okay, write it down. I'll take one more question. Back there. Uh, my name is Fatma Sarayli. I'm a Norwegian Turkish uh, person who is following Turkey very closely and studying actually Middle Eastern studies for the moment last year. Um, I would like to ask, it might be an allegation from my, my side, uh, but there is also widely known that, uh, not officially, but like Turkish uh, 
PM Eren Erdem is talking very much about the evidences of that Erdogan is supporting ISIS. And how can we uh, relate to his uh, cards, which you, you are talking about in Syria that I'm fighting against ISIS, while actually he's uh, financing uh, ISIS. This, this is an allegation uh, from my side, but this is widely known. And what do you think about this? And a second short thing, um, the, the freedom of speech we are supporting uh, is not only for Asla Erdogan, which I also support very much, but there is 119 other journalists in Turkey. Uh, even if we don't like their views, even if we don't like their mentality, but they are not criminals. They are just people who wanted to use their right of uh, express themselves freely. And why don't they get as much as support as Can Dündar or Asla Erdoğan? Even though I love those people, I love Ahmet Altan, he's one of my favorites, and I'm very sad about what's happening with him. But I'm also very sad as a person for equality that the voice of the other people are not heard. Thank you. Thank you for that question. First, Sanal, about uh, Deep State, Gülen. The question about uh, the Deep State and Fethullah Gülen. And, uh, two words. Excuse me, about the first question. The first question, yeah. yeah. Uh, I will ask uh, please to repeat the question shortly. My ears cannot hear the uh, high frequencies. This is why I, sometimes I cannot differ the words. Excuse me. Will you please clearly once again repeat the question? Uh, Erdogan always talking about deep state. Deep state? Yes. Yeah. About Fatihullah Gulen uh, wings in, inside the Turkish state. So do you think it's right uh, what happened in, uh, in summer, the coup, uh, that Fatihullah Gulen involved in this coup, or just he's, uh, he's lying about Fatihullah Gulen? Uh, you know Fatihullah Gulen, the, the, the teacher of Erdogan, so... <laughs> Berna, could you hear, well, can, can you help me? Yes. The same thing has happened again. Yes, I can get some words, but when I'm not able to hear the high frequencies and words mix with each other. Uh, thank you. Well, the deep state, it was never uh, called about Gulen's affair. Deep state exist in Turkey even before the Republic. It's a heritage from Ottoman Empire. Deep State always stayed there. And uh, they have provocated many, many things. And from time to time, actions like uh, 6th and 7th September 1955 pogrom, later on, the uh, three-star general uh, said, confessed that it was a perfect action of the deep state. The word deep state, they do not use themselves. There are other names for that, but simply. So, but now Erdogan is blaming every everybody with combination with Fethullah Gülen. And uh, in his speeches and books, etc., Gülen says very clearly that our, long is a, our way is a very long, long way. We must be patient, slowly by slowly, we must gain new caterers, um, new generations. And he never says that when, when they come to, to any point and what will they do afterwards. But he always say that we will never fight with any government. We will never uh, conflict with them. We will always be silent and deep. And years and years, Erdogan and Gülen worked together. They supported Erdogan. Then, um, how many years ago? I can't remember exactly, but 3MHP 
Nationalist Party, MPs, were caught in some hotel rooms with some women, filmed. Who did that? How could they do this? Because they were listening to uh, their uh, telephone conversations at, uh, and they were in polis and in judiciary too. Just keeping silent, running silent, running deep. But then, when uh, they, they came to a point that Erdogan also felt himself alone, for, they fought against the army. And may, with some scandals, um, the army has lost its uh, prestige. Uh, and cases opened, generals were tried. In some cases, it was correct, I believe, and some not exaggerated too much. Then, Erdogan immediately felt that he's alone. <laughs> what will happen? The, everything is going. Uh, and this, uh, in, also, in MIT, Turkish uh, Secret Agency, uh, he wanted to control them. Then, uh, the struggle started between them. And Gülen's team, I guess, they have been recording every type of politician's speeches. They started using the same thing against Erdogan. Then the uh, work started. But this is not the real Turkish deep state. It is still there, believe me, in the army, controlled by the army. And, but in, of course, intelligence services, there are separate groups. Thank you. Siri, would you just add two words? Do you think Gulen is behind the coup this summer, 15th of July? It's hard to know. <laughs> but, um, and also, I just want to add that.